Hello, welcome. Um, what am I doing? This is going to be the last video in the little series of electrical videos that I'm doing. You know, we've done this, which I'm really, really happy with. We've done the main sort of bulk of my electrical system. And there's obviously still loads more stuff to do in terms of like wiring up fans, fridges, heaters, things like that. But I thought a nice way to finish would be with my little 12 volt spotlights. They're gonna be the first of many 12 volt appliances that I'm gonna be connecting to this little fuse box. And I just thought it was quite a sort of symbolic, momentous finish. Hopefully switching that on switch and seeing them come on. So I'll run through what I've got. I've got six 12 volt spotlights. I've got this sort of uh, touch sensitive um, dimmer switch. Very fancy. Um, I've got 10 meters of red 1.5 millimeter cable and 10 meters of black 1.5 millimeter cable. And then I've got some T-tap connectors, which I'll go into a bit more detail about later. Um, and then I've got an assortment of electrical wire terminals. Um, and these have uh, actually heat shrinkable as well. So I don't need to worry about buying some heat shrink separately. Now, I'm gonna fit two pairs of three. Let's go this side. So you can see here, I'm gonna fit one either side of this fan, one other side of the fan down the end, um, and then one pair in the middle as well. I'm gonna wire them all up in parallel, which I'll explain why in a minute. Um, and then the main cable is gonna come down here. I'm gonna fit the switch, the dimmer switch here. I figured it's quite, it's not too far from my side door and I can still reach it from the bed. Um, and then that's gonna go underneath to the fuse box. Now, parallel. It's important that you wire your lights up in parallel so that they share the power evenly. Um, if you wire them up in series, it's likely that the first light in the series is going to be super bright and then obviously you get voltage drop as you go further down the circuit and meaning that the last light is going to be really dim. What that also means is if one of the if, uh, one of the LEDs breaks or blows, the whole all of them are going to blow as well. So I'll show you now how I'm sort of going to connect them up with a diagram. So you can sort of see this is sort of like a bird's eye view of the van. The front being this way. Here's my side door. We'll call this my power. So this is obviously where the 12 volt fuse box will be. Um, and then the switch just here up above it. Uh, so these are my six lights. This is where they're going to be placed. Um, and you can see they've got a positive and negative coming away from each one of them. Now I'm going to run my black and red cable up from the power into the switch. The switch accepts positive and negative. I think that's common for dimmer switches. They, they take both the negative and positive wires. And then those two positive and negative wires, I'm going to sort of um, feed around the roof like so. And then it's just a case of attaching the positive and negative wires from each LED onto that sort of main positive and negative wire running around. Now the main reason there, and you can see they're in parallel, so it means when the electricity is running around this, say positive cable, it can either go up to the LED or it can move on to the next one. Um, that means that all the electricity is shared evenly, and if one breaks, I can just pull it out of the circuit and the rest will continue to work um, as normal. Also, you probably noticed straight away that um, I don't have any cladding on my roof yet. I don't actually have anywhere to house the uh, lights. So for now, I'm just going to fix them in place with some electrical tape. And I mentioned when I was doing this sort of battening, I don't have any electrics underneath uh, my insulation. I purposefully wanted to keep them the inside of the van. Um, you know, there's enough space here in between each of the, um, the battens to feed wires. And it means if I need to troubleshoot or, you know, access any of those wires, all I'm having to do is just unscrew a bit of um, cladding rather than having to dig into insulation. So that works out fine. Now, the first thing I'm going to do 
for each of the positive and negative wires on each of the six LEDs, I'm going to fit one of these uh, male connectors. So this means all I need to do is just crimp it there. And then, as I said before, these are heat shrinkable, so I can just apply a bit of heat with my heat gun um, and it will um, seal it on the wire. So yeah, the reason I want to use these male and females is because I'm going to add a female one to my positive and negative wire. And so that just means if one of the LEDs breaks, um, I can literally just pull it, um, disconnect the wires um, and replace, replace it with a new one. Right, so I've got this very handy um, cutting, stripping and crimping tool from Amazon, about 15 quid. So, wire literally goes in there like that, up to the metal bit. And then I guess in there like that. And So now they're all crimped, I'm just going to stick them under the heat gun and that will melt um, this pink casing around it, make a tire seal. So there we go, look, the heat shrink down a lot tighter. So now they are all um, crimped and heat shrinked, I think I'll position them with some electrical tape on the roof so I know where they're going to be and then I'm going to start getting the the main sort of positive and negative cable measured up and taped around the roof yeah let's do that there we go look I don't think I'll bother clad in the roof, these look amazing. Um, okay, so yeah, as I said, I'm gonna feed, my switch is gonna go back here. So I'm gonna feed some black and red cable. I'll go along here, around, and then down this corner um, to that one. That'll be the last one, I guess. Full circle. Sweet. Right then, so I haven't cut the wire yet, but so the switch is gonna be here. Positive and negative goes up, goes around the back, that light will connect in, that light will connect in, and it goes down this corner, I've got two lights here so they'll connect across and then it goes down to the bottom where this light will connect in and then this one is just connected straight in just with the male and female because that's the end of the line there. So now this main sort of positive and negative channel is up, I need to cut some lengths of positive and negative cable to fasten to this, yes. Yes. What I've done, I've done a positive and negative. I've connected the sort of female connector on here. That will plug into one of the lights. And then this end, on the other side you have one of these. So what this does, see this little uh, metal bit here? You basically pop it on here and snap it down on the on the positive wire that's running across there and that little metal connector will connect to the metal and then this can just come along and fit on the end so you're sort of creating like a a t-joint with the cables um, and that'll allow me to connect each one to that main positive and negative wire that was running through so i'm going to do this for each of the lights as like a little extension right so i'm going to show you how these little things work so can you see, it's got a little metal clip inside. So what you do, is you clip it to this, to the main positive wire here. And what that does, the metal bit slices through the wire. There you go. 
So that's clipped into place, so it's dissecting the wire. And then this extension wire, plug this end into the end of it, like so, and that makes a connection there. And then I'll plug the other end into the positive wire, which in this case is black for some reason on the light. Like that. So that means if I need to change the light or something, I literally just need to unplug this and pull it out rather than um, take out the whole wire. Um, so now I just need to do that for every positive and negative wire for the light. Right then, so all my lights are connected. So now all I need to do is wire in this really fancy switch. So as I said before, all it takes is a positive and negative input and positive and uh, negative output. Put the plonket here as well. So for the two wires that are gonna to connect to my fuse box, I'm gonna crimp and heat shrink two of these lads on the end. So the, the negative end attaches to this bus bar here. And the positive end connects to one of these terminals here. So you can see attach the negative end to this little bus bar, the positive end to here, and then it's got a slot for a fuse. Now, if you remember back to the equation that I mentioned in the first of these videos, what equals volts times amps, to work out what size fuse we need, we need to do the reverse of that. So each of these spotlights are 2.5 watts. So times that by six, and you get 15 watts. You have to check that. So if we do watts divided by volts, so in this case it's a 12 volt system, that makes 1.25 amps. So that's the maximum amount of amps that these six lights are gonna pull at once. So in terms of finding the right amp fuse, a good, a good thing to do is just to times it by 25%. So if you times 1.25 by 1.25 to get 25%, you get just over 1.5 amps. Now there are no such thing as a 1.5 amp fuse. So I've just gone one up at a two amp fuse. And then I'm gonna chuck it in here. Like, so, there we go. So now I just need to connect the other ends to my switch. Say the fuse cover's got some stickers. So I've got interior light stuck on there. Woo! All right then. Positive and negative go into positive and negative input. Now I need to do the same for these two. Right then, this is actually a huge moment and I'm not actually um, well, ner <laughs> well nervous. <laughs> Everything's connected up. Let me just check this. <sighs> Let's do it, I guess. Right, so step one. Turn on my kill switch because my 12 volt thing's off. Holy sh <laughs> Oh my days, look. Oh my God. I'm so happy about that. It's just started raining as well. Um, fuck. What a nice way to end this little series. Let me stand under a spotlight. Oh my days. Cool, man. I'm dead happy with that. Um, yeah, so look, little touch screen on off. And then you can tap this for the 
the dimness. I think you can stroll it as well. Or you can tap and it gets brighter. Get in. That's it, That's um, that sort of concludes this little electrical series, I guess. As I said, yeah, I've got, got loads more to wire up and stuff, but I'll just do some videos later on. Yeah, thanks for watching, really appreciate it. And yeah, if you've got any questions or comments or anything, just put them in below. Um, <laughs> see you soon. <laughs>